Hello, it's Gino here. If you like aggressive openings, you're in the right place. And um, today I'd like to share a variation in the Knight of Sicilian. So after your standard moves e4, c5, knight f3, d6, pawn to d4, pawn takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight c3 and a6, we get to the starting position of the Knight of Sicilian. Now in this position, white has a number of um, popular tries here, bishop to g e3, um, even bishop to g5, and even bishop to c4 are popular tries for white. Um, but in this game, we'll be looking at this variation with rook to g1. Interesting. Um, this move um, leads to um, the freak attack. I'm not really sure how these chess openings get their names, but yeah, I've, I've seen that's the only name I can find for it in all my research. Um, and the idea here is for um, white to play pawn to g4 um, and pawn to g5 to start a, kick, a, a quick um, kingside um, attack. Okay, so we'll look at a game between BDR, rated 2480, and Netrebko, rated 2157 in Dubai 2010 um, and in that game um, black so Netrebko in this game the player of the black pieces and um, played um, a very um, normal standard you know developing move knight to c6 but, I mean why just continues with um, pawn to g4 and um, the main idea behind this rook to g1 um, and then after knight takes d4, queen takes um, d4. Now Trepko played bishop takes g4, which was a blunder. Um, we'll see why that's a blunder in a minute um, if we just go back one move. Um, the alternatives here, I mean, it still wasn't too late for um, black to play a sensible move. Um, the alternative was knight to um, g4. Um, when white doesn't have any... Um, tactical threats here but he has this positional move um knight to d5 um, and maybe even bishop to e2 as well gaining a tempo but knight to d5 is what's been played a couple of times um, and white should have a little bit of compensation i mean the point here is that knight takes h2 would be a blunder because that knight would be trapped in the corner of the board after say bishop to e2 um, so just going back after knight to d5, uh, black would be forced to do, come up with an alternative. I mean, bishop d7 has been played um, a couple of times. Um, yeah, but white's shown to have some advantage in those lines. Um, just going back to the game. Um, yeah, so after queen takes d4, yeah, instead of um, knight takes um, g4, <laughs> And the trap call went for bishop takes g4. Um, but yeah, the next move shows why this moves a blunder. Rook takes g4, exclamation mark. Now the point here is after knight takes g4 and queen to a4 check, black doesn't have any satisfactory replies. Um, if b5, for example, um, knight takes b5, um, noting that queen to d7 isn't possible because of this um, check, note the queen's pinned um, and after um, queen takes d7 um, white would clearly be up material and um, just going back um, to that position and um, after i think it was b5 and knight takes b5 we've just seen queen to b7 was impossible this move will also be bad because of bishop takes b5 when black would have to give up the queen and um, so yeah so just going back to the game and continuation after this queen to a4 um, check, um, Netrebko obviously didn't fancy pawn to b5 because of the variations we've just seen. Um, I played to queen d7 instead. Um, but yeah, the problem was yeah, bishop to b5 um, taking advantage of this pin on the a file. Obviously the queen can't capture on b5 because that um, bishop's protected by the knight. So yeah. And Netrebko continued pawn takes b5, but after queen takes a8, and um, was soon well and truly lost. Um, note that this b pawn <laughs> is going to fall next move. Um, I mean, this position, believe it or not, um, 
is winning for white and um, even though there's obviously material advantage so four minor pieces and six pawns against um yeah four minor pieces and six pawns the point is that um yeah <laughs> black is well behind in development well way 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 behind in development and yeah potentially there's an outside pass pawn here anyway this game continued slightly differently we saw pawn to b4 um, there's nothing the trap could do to save the pawn um, but yeah after pawn to um, b4 white didn't even bother capturing on b4 with, with the queen and just played knight to d5 so there's a deadly threat of knight to c7 um, and the trap could responded queen to d7 um, but only now queen takes b4 um, the trap could try knight takes h2 but then after bishop to f4 um, attacking the knight the knight tried to check and um, queen came to g4 perhaps hoping for some you know double double check and um, but then after queen to b8 check king to d7 and queen to c7 it was all over i mean and king to e6 would have been checkmate and um, so that didn't really yeah black didn't do that tried king e8 instead and um, but yeah after this knight e3 um <laughs> netrapko resigned i think the point here was um the queen can't come off the diagonal because a queen to c8 checkmate and if the yeah so the queen can't go to h5 and um, but yeah if the queen moves elsewhere i don't know let's say queen to h3 for example um then there's this move knight to f5 blocking the diagonal <laughs> Um, yeah, so just going back to the um, starting position of this attack, so the position with rook to g1, there are different ways for black to play, and the first one we'll look at is um, starting with a move and um, pawn to g6, and this one was seen in a game between Van Forest and Firuja in Waikansei in 2020. Um, and that game, I mean, g6 makes sense here because it makes this rook look a bit misplaced. Because normally, in lines where white chocks the pawns up on the king side, the rook is better placed on, on h1. But it turns out the white still gets an advantage even in this variation. So, I mean, after um, this pawn to g6 move by Firuja, um, Von Forest played um, pawn to g4 anyway. Firuja tried knight c6, but then after g5, the knight had to go back to to d7. And white just continued with this kingside pawn storm, um, h4. Firuja in the game played knight takes d4. And after queen takes d4, knight to e5 with this uncomfortable threat of knight to f3. Um, to deal with this, um, white had a surprising move here. He played king to d1. But it's interesting, the engine show that white still has an advantage even after king to e2 or, or the game continuation king to d1. And um, because, um, yeah, Firuja was forced to get this rook off the diagonal because pawn to f4 was a strong threat. Um, and yeah, after rook to g8, white continued knight to d5. Um, and in the game, um, Firuja went bishop to e6. And was under a bit of pressure after this queen to um, b4. Um, just going back um, a couple of moves. After knight to d5. The engines show that um, bishop to g7. Um, you know should be a better move. Um, although white still has a little bit of a plus. For example after queen to b6. And queen takes b6. Knight takes b6. Um <laughs> I mean, it's a very strange position. I mean, both both sides are going to lose Castling, um, rights. Um, but it turns out, um, according to some analysis from the engines, that this is slightly better um, for White. Although, with correct play from both sides, this should, you know, should this should be, um, drawn. Well, yeah. So that brings us to the two other alternatives, which I think are the best replies to, um, to this opening. 
Um, so in this position, the two key replies and the two I would recommend, uh, pawn to e5 and pawn to b5. So let's look at pawn to e5 first. Now the um, the, the good thing about this pawn to e5 is it forces um, white to do something about um, this knight in the center. Um, and it's a well-known chess um, saying that you should always counter, you know, a wing attack with a, an attack in the center. And um, so, yeah, this pawn to e5 um, forces white to do something about the knight. And a normal move here is knight to b3. Um, white wants to go bishop to e3, queen to d2, castles, queen side. Um, but here, black plays energetically, bishop to e6, aiming for, again, sorry, just going back, not sure what happened there. Again, aiming for this pawn to d5, counter strike in the center, um, which we shall see. Um, after g4 and d5. Now the point here is the white doesn't have time for pawn to g5 because of knight takes e4. So the usual reply would be to capture um, in the center but after um, <laughs> some massive trades in the center uh, we get an equal position, roughly equal position um, where I think in this move white usually goes bishop to b6 but yeah theory has and um, black is equal after either rook to d7 and um, or the move that's more popular this these days rook to d6 and um, so this this is the equalizing line that i would recommend and um, if you if you were playing the black and um, pieces for the more ambitious players and um, if we go back to the starting position the other and um, more promising try is to go and um, pawn to b5 so Black's anticipating, you know, an attack on the king side, and he's counter attacking immediately, you know, on the queen side. And um, now, after this move, and um, white may continue and um, pawn to g4, and um, as is the case after this um, rook to g1. And um, but here, black just simply plays bishop to b7, attacking the e4 pawn. So, notice black is combining a queen side counter attack with you know a counter attack in the center and um, just going back one move it's just important to um to show you that pawn to b4 doesn't win a pawn after say knight d5 and knight takes e4 because of this move bishop to g2 and um, this bishop is too strong on the diagonal the knight's threatened and if the knight were to move knight takes b4 would allow white to win material uh, for example, after the rook moves, yeah, we get this um, knight fork on the queen and rook. You wouldn't want to do that. So just going back to the position after um, this pawn to g4. Yeah, the move for black here is um, bishop to b7. Um, after which white's forced to play bishop to g2 to defend the e4 pawn. Um, okay, now... White's gonna play g5 next move, so yeah, the typical response for black here would be knight f to d7, just so the g5 isn't played with tempo. And um, but then after normal developing moves like bishop to e3, e6, pawn to f4, and um, not the queen to h4 check is impossible because of bishop to f2 and queen taking on. <laughs> On h2 would just be too greedy so i won't even look at that well it's probably just worth showing you um yeah you shouldn't really play chess like this 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 queen um could get trapped in the <laughs> in the corner board say after something like knight c to e2 so i'm um, just going back and um, okay so the move i'd recommend here is pawn to b4 um, just taking that back for a second, um, it's just worth noting that bishop to e7 is possible, but <laughs> white gets strong counterplay um, on the king side um, after a move like um, g5. And yeah, this is not for the faint hearted. Um, I mean, it should still be okay for black because he's got his fair play of counterplay on the queen side, but yeah, um, if we just take back um, one move. Um, I think the better try here and one that's supported by the engines is pawn to b4. Um, the point being this knight has to go somewhere. 
um, so say for example knight um, c to e2 but then after e5 again continuing to strike counter counter strike in the center of the board and say something like knight to f5 queen to c7 should be about equal um, for black and um, so yeah this is this is the line i'd recommend if you were to face this variation in a knight off um, yeah so just to recap um, after this um, move that introduces the freak attack black has a number of continuations knight to c6 which we saw and um, leads to you know a clear advantage for white um, g6 is also possible but it leads to very odd positions but yeah black can equalize with either pawn to e5 or um, pawn to b5 and so yeah i hope you enjoyed this one and please don't forget to like subscribe and share if you enjoyed this one and yeah hope to see you on the next one